Third big challenge is uh, pursuing a balanced approach in our nuclear strategy. So in the Cold War, which was all dim distant history to all of you, um, uh, we had a fierce national nuclear debate. Uh, nuclear weapons, of course, evoke high emotion. They should. Um, and we had a huge debate, but we had relative consistency in policy over the decades because the debate produced consensus on a number of key propositions that we needed to maintain nuclear weapons, that we needed to play a role in, in providing protection for our allies. There's a list of them. And what's happened since the end of the Cold War is that debate, along with every other debate in Washington, has changed for the worse. Basically, what's happened is the middle in the debate went off and thought about other stuff. And so what we have had is a debate about nuclear policy dominated by two extreme camps, each of which detests the other. Uh, and on the, one, on the one side is the group that sees nuclear weapons as simply relics of the Cold War, leftover historical pains in the backside that are dangerous to have, and we ought to be rid of them as quickly as possible. On the other, and, and, and who believe that the further we go down that path unilaterally, the more that will create the conditions for Russia and China and others to join us in this process. Uh, at the other extreme is a camp that sort of sees, um, you know, the old saying about if you have if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, there's an analog here, which is if you've got a nuclear deterrent, everything looks like a problem for which nuclear deterrence is relevant. And these people have sought new nuclear weapons for new military purposes in the 21st century. These people have said, over my dead body, are you going to get new nuclear weapons for anything new in the 21st century? And the situation we inherited in the Obama administration coming in in 2008, 2009, was one of utter and complete gridlock on all issues of nuclear policy. Um, Secretary Perry, who spoke with you earlier this week or last uh, Wednesday, um, was asked by the Congress in 2007 to chair a commission to offer advice. It was a bipartisan commission, five Democrats, five Republicans. He was joined by former Secretary of Defense Schlesinger. And the Congress asked, is there a strategy in the nuclear area covering all of that stuff? Deterrence, nonproliferation, arms control, relations with Russia and China, protecting our allies. Is there a strategy that might possibly enjoy bipartisan support so we can have some steadiness of purpose in this business for the long term. The legislation, the page of the law that actually created that commission was the same page that then said to the next incoming administration, you have to do a nuclear posture review. Uh, so basically the Congress said to Secretary Perry, help, help me get smart so I can be a smart consumer of whatever this new administration does on nuclear policy and strategy. Uh, the answer of that commission was almost no. That it was not, that there was no potential for agreement. It almost collapsed. Uh, it found agreement, and the Obama administration worked very hard to follow the recommendations of, of that commission, despite the fact that it was staffed more by people on this side of the debate than by this side of the debate. You know that President Obama, very early in his administration, gave a speech in Prague in which he, he expressed the, the commitment of the United States, his personal commitment to create the conditions that would allow us ultimately to eliminate nuclear weapons, although he said this isn't likely to happen in my lifetime. Uh, and the, the administration has made a very big push on trying to take concrete steps to reduce the number and role of nuclear weapons, strengthen the disarmament regime, strengthen the nonproliferation regime, sustain the arms control process with Russia so that we make reductions together, but at the same time ensure that nuclear deterrence remains effective for the problems for which it's relevant in the 21st century. So you hopefully all read the, 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 the piece of reading that I asked you to take on this week, the Nuclear Posture Review Report. 
It was an effort to embrace this balanced approach. Uh, this was the third nuclear posture review done since the end of the Cold War. And the, during the Cold War, we didn't need them. The nuclear posture was being constantly reviewed and updated because we were in a very competitive process with the Soviet Union. Uh, the, then the Cold War ended. Uh, the George H.W. Bush administration took a number of big steps to reduce the number of nuclear weapons in the U.S. arsenal, the alert level of the nuclear force, um, the deployments of U.S. nuclear weapons. They all came home from East Asia, for example. Uh, this was followed by then the Clinton administration's first formal nuclear posture review, which basically asked, now that the Cold War is over, do we need all these Cold War nuclear weapons? Uh, and they set out, this was Secretary Perry's review, they set out the so-called lead but hedge strategy. Lead in making rapid nuclear reductions because we don't know these, we don't need these Cold War nuclear forces, but hedge against the possibility that things go badly in Moscow, they go badly quickly, and if they go badly and we end up with a non-democratic regime in Moscow, it's not going to be friendly. It's going to be angry. Hedge against that problem. Eight years later came the Bush administration. Uh, the Bush administration um, set out uh, a very elaborate posture review, uh, which it uh, provided to the Capitol Hill as a classified report. It was immediately leaked. Uh, therefore, it became illegal for any administration spokesman to discuss it in public because you were discussing a classified document in public, which you couldn't do. This little bit of bureaucratic politics was very confusing to the public debate about what the Bush administration had decided. Um, but they really gave a big plug for missile defense. They really gave a big plug for um, replacing elements of the nuclear posture with non-nuclear strike capabilities. In, in the real world today, if the president wants to fire something, a weapon into Afghanistan within 30 minutes, the only weapon he can fire is a nuclear weapon. That's not, that's not the best toolkit for the president to work with. So the Bush administration gave a push to that. Um, the Bush administration was much more thoughtful than the Clinton administration at linking nuclear deterrence strategy to overall defense strategy. The, the, the George W. Bush administration's defense strategy set out four main goals. Assuring our allies, dissuading potential competitors like China, deterring potential aggressors, and defeating them if it comes to it. And this vocabulary about assurance and dissuasion was kind of there were some Cold War aspects to that, but this was kind of new to the post-Cold War debate. Um, we picked up some elements of all of these ideas in our posture review. You've read, you've read the five goals. Um, we believe it's possible to do both non-proliferation and arms control and to maintain strong and effective deterrence. Uh, we found a way to reduce the role of nuclear weapons in our overall strategy and the declaratory policy changes you read. Um, you saw the focus on strengthening strategic stability as we reduce numbers with Russia. Um, I, I want to highlight is, so uh, the, the third big challenge is providing a politically viable, balanced approach to maintaining our overall nuclear strategy. And I'd say so far, so good. Um, but like everything else in Washington politics, this topic is caught up in the hyperpartisanship of the moment. Um, most of the Republican critics of this strategy argue that it's too soft, uh, and um, they attack it on political terms, but they don't have alternatives. At the same time that they attack the strategy, they praise this overall balanced approach as the only, only possible pathway forward. Of note, the Bush administration never expressed a commitment to the ultimate fulfillment of the, all of the obligations of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. And Secretary Gates, who worked for both Bush and Obama, was asked 
uh, what he made of the Prague speech. And Gates said, it's been my pleasure to work for eight presidents, and seven of them were willing to say that it's a long-term goal of the United States to eliminate nuclear weapons. He was untroubled by that. So if we end up with uh, uh, Hillary Clinton in the White House or a different Democrat in the White House, uh, I think you'll see this balanced approach maintained, but with, a little, with some heavy leaning on how much more can we do unilaterally to advance this agenda, because Russia is not going anywhere with us anytime soon, and China's building up, not down. And if we get a Republican in the White House, I'm afraid that the dialogue will be about new nuclear weapons for new military purposes in the 21st century, which will kill the willingness of the Congress to fund anything in this area. <laughs>